Okay, so I'm going to run the tests again to kick off today. And where we left off was the test increment miles driven method works, the test get mileage method works, and the test set bin method doesn't work yet, but that's not surprising because we haven't implemented those methods yet. So let's do that. So I'll close this. And let's go find the VIN related methods at the end of the mileage tracker class. These were methods that I wrote for us, but we commented out, so we need to like re-enable the implementation. So here's the accessor method get VIN. We'll enable uncomment return this dot VIN and delete the other return. So now we're actually returning a reference to the string stored in the instance variable. And then here's the set VIN method. So we can actually uncomment its implementation as well. These are the last two methods of the mileage tracker class. All right, well, let's run the tests again. So I compiled the class. I'm going to click on run tests. Ugh, it still fails. Test set VIN doesn't pass. It says it expected the string, and your string might be different. We just made up the string. It expected the string, but it got null. Okay. When a test fails, it certainly could be that there is a bug in the mileage tracker class, but it also could just be that there's a bug in the test class itself. Sometimes tests fail because the tests are wrong, right? So it's worth taking a look at both. Um, and this is another opportunity for us to use the debugger. So you saw the debugger previously. Um, it's certainly worth seeing again. It's a complicated new tool we've never used before. Um, so I'm going to open up the mileage tracker test class and I'm going to find the test set VIN method. And I'm going to set a breakpoint on the first line of code in test set VIN by clicking in the white far left column. And I get my little stop sign for the breakpoint. It highlights the line of code red. That's exactly what I, what I want. So now if I click run tests again, it brings up the debugger. Okay. The line of code in green is the line of code we're about to execute, so I'm about to make a new mileage tracker object. If I look in the debugger here, I can see my call sequence, and the current method is test set bin. Yeah. Yeah, you have to compile before you can set breakpoints. Otherwise, it doesn't really know how to do the breakpoint. Um, so here's so now we're in the test code. So I want to show you a couple other debugger things. If I hit step, the, the green code has been executed. The new highlighted green code is the line of code that's about to be executed. But now the local variable shows up. So here's test tracker, the local variable. Its value is an object reference, okay? Because we just created a new mileage tracker object, right? That's like the object created somewhere in the computer's memory. The object reference is like that little code we'd make up and write on the white sheet of paper. Or in the physical model, it's like the Wii remote with a string to the object. This is cool. In BlueJ, I can double click on test tracker and it opens up this little red box, which is a lot, which basically models the white sheet of paper we use in our model. Here are all the instance variables of the object, and here are their values. This looks just like the white sheet of paper we make. Here's the class name at the top. Here are the instance variables. Here's their values. Okay? I can actually leave this open um, and watch these values change. Um, as, as the code runs if I want. So that's pretty cool. All right, here's another line of code we're about to execute. We're about to make a new string 
and assign that reference to test bin. So I'm going to hit step for that. Here's the test bin. Um, because the string class um, is like a Java standard class, li library class, um, and we'll learn how this works in a, next week. Um, yes, it's still an object reference. That's what this little red box means. Yes, I can still click on that, and here's like the object and all of its attributes for a string. But instead of just saying object reference, it also prints out the string here for us, which is just nice. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Makes our life easier. So far, things look pretty good. The line of code we're about to execute is going to call the set bin method on the test tracker variable, and it's going to pass test bin as the argument. So I want to actually see how this works. So instead of pressing step, I'm going to press step into. And when I press step into, several things change. The file I'm looking at here is now the mileage tracker class, and I'm in the set bin method. And the line of code that's about to be executed is highlighted in green. <coughs> if I look in the debugger, I'm not in the test set bin method anymore in the call sequence. I'm now in the set bin method. And I can see that test set bin called set bin because of the order they're listed in this pane. I can even click back on test set bin if I want to see where I came from and then return back to set bin to see the line of code I'm about to execute. Now, since that I'm in the mileage tracker class, I can see all the instance variables that were in that red box. Um, and there, as expected, we just made a new object. Everything is zero or null. I can see the value of the parameter variable bin here. It's that string, so that looks good. And I'm about to update my instance variable. So I'm going to hit step. And that's not what I expected. The value of the instance variable is still null. This line of code didn't change it. So that's that's the problem, right? I expected at this point that this instance variable then would be having the same reference and it's still null. This is what we have to focus on and fix. So I'm going to hit terminate. I'm going to open this back up so we can edit it. Um, what we just experienced here is, in my experience, the most common bug that new students run into um, when they um, are first defining classes. Um, so we're going to go dive into, like, why does this happen and how can we prevent All right, um, so in my opinion, I think the Java programming, the Java compiler could detect this and warn us about this. I don't know why it doesn't, but we can't change the Java compiler, so we're going to have to deal with this as best we can. So let's add a comment here explaining what is happening, and we're going to go from here. What What is happening here is that we named the parameter variable then the same as our instance variable then. So we have an instance variable and a parameter variable with the same name. While I think that should generate at least a warning of some sort, instead um, what happens is the parameter variable wins. It takes precedence. We say it shadows the instance variable. Like, we can't see the instance variable because it's like in the shadow of the parameter variable. So let's make a note about this because it shows up all the time if we're not careful. So if the parameter was named then, it would shadow, is the term we use, the instance variable then. Okay. So that's what's going on. Okay. Um, What's the rule? Like, so we can like avoid this. Here's the rule. Local and parameter variables. So not just parameter variables, local variables too. They shadow instance variables 
of the same name. That's just the behavior of Java. We're stuck with it. So in this code, then would refer to the parameter and not the instance variable. We are essentially assigning, this line of code says, take the value of the parameter variable then and store it in the parameter variable then, right? Set the variable to itself. That doesn't do anything this way. Right? So, how do we fix this? The code we have is bad, doesn't work. <laughs> so let's comment that out. We'll do something better. Here is something that's at least good. One way to fix this is to use this. This.vin equals vin. We're now being more explicit. This says this object's instance variable vin is being set to the value of the parameter variable vin. So that's one way to fix it. So to refer explicitly to an instance variable, use this. And that's good. Sometimes we forget this though. And then we have this bug and we're really confused as to why our class doesn't work. Okay. Um, so my recommendation is to do something better. Okay. So here's better practice. Avoid this issue entirely by giving local parameter and instance variables unique names. If all local parameter instance variables have unique names, we never have to worry about shadowing. And if we, ask, if we forget to use this somewhere, our code's still going to work. We're not going to have this really tricky bug. So let's comment out the good and write a better solution. This.vin equals, let's call it new bin. Let's change the name of the parameter. Now that does mean we do need to scroll up here a little bit and change in our method header, we have to change the parameter here to new bin as well. Because this has to you know, be updated to match. This is definitely a better approach. So if we switch over, compile everything, run our tests again. Oops, I left a breakpoint there. I'll say continue. Hey, they all pass. All three of our tests pass. This is great. We now have a much higher confidence that the code in mileage tracker um, works. Is it totally bug free? Not necessarily. It's really hard to write totally bug free code. Um, but um, it's still a good sign that like if we have bugs in the future, maybe they're related more to like the integration with other classes and not solely within our class. So this is, we're in, we're in great shape here.